You know, I remember the first time that I took a good long look at the 12 steps. I thought to myself, you know, I don't see where these steps are going to solve any of my problems. I don't see a step that has to do with my financial issues. I don't see a step that has anything to do with legal issues. I don't see one that has anything to do with relationships. Well, I was blinded, that's for sure. See, I thought that if I just quit drinking, everything would be okay. My life would clear up. I mean, that's what I was being told by, by people. You need to quit drinking, Earl. If you just quit drinking, you'd be a good guy. Everything would be all right. Well, it's not about the drinking. It's not about the drinking. It's about who I became. It's about who I was. And I say was because I'm not that guy anymore. Now, could I be that guy again? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I continue to practice the 12 steps. The 12 steps changed me. You know, when I admitted that I was powerless over alcohol and that my life was unmanageable, when I truly admitted that, not when I just said it to get somebody off my back or to appease a sponsor or something along those lines, I did it because I meant it. I felt it to my core that I was powerless over alcohol and that my life was completely unmanageable. When I did that, it started something that I had really no control over anymore. It started a, 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 a perpetual motion of recovery. Step one left me completely powerless. What was I supposed to do with that? Well, I went on to step two. I came to believe that there's a power greater than me that can restore me to sanity. Okay, so now we've got some hope, right? <laughs> well, that power needed to become the manager of my life. So I turned my will and my life over to a power greater than myself, a God of my understanding. It has taken some time to understand the God of my understanding, and I still don't completely. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in step 11. Once I turn my will and my life over to a power greater than myself, I'm now ready to continue on with the steps. Step four is when I really take a hard look at myself. I like to say that step four is like a push pin on a map that says, you are here. Now, where do you want to go from there? It gives me the desire to continue to go on to steps five, six, and seven. Five is where I share it with another human being and with God. You know, we tend to forget that. Yeah, I'm going to go do a fifth step with my sponsor. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I think it says with God and another person. We admit it to ourselves, to God, and to another person. Once step five is complete, we have really taken a hard look at ourselves and we've admitted it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being. We're ready to move on to step six and seven. And this is when we become entirely ready to remove these shortcomings. Now this is, this is pivotal. Okay, this is pivotal in recovery to become entirely ready to have God remove these things. The reason I say it's pivotal is because 
what we're asking him to remove are things that we've used as ways to to live they've they've become our way of life our coping skills it's how we deal with life and we're asking god to remove those things it's a real leap of faith god remove these things and hopefully they'll be replaced with other things they will be <laughs> So now, now that we have asked God humbly to remove our shortcomings, we move on to step eight, where we refer back to our list in step four and possibly add some more people to our list. People that we have harmed in the past. People we owe an amends to. We make that list. And once that list is made, then, with the help of a sponsor, we go out and we make those amends to those people that we've harmed. Except, when to do so would injure them or others. At this point, we've gotten to cleaning house. Our house is being cleaned. Step nine, I have to say, it's a bit of a lifetime process. Because even though maybe you've gotten to the point and you feel like you've made all the amends you need to make, you can just cross that one off the list. <laughs> what about what you do today? What about what you did yesterday or what you're doing tomorrow? Are you going to owe an amends to someone? Probably. That's what step 10 is about. It's about keeping our side of the street clean. We continue to take a personal inventory, and when we're wrong, we promptly admit it. We don't wait. We don't wait till it builds up and we have to do a fourth step over it. No, we take care of it right here and right now, immediately. Now we move on to step 11, and step 11 is where I start to, to really gain that relationship with that power that's greater than myself. I seek through prayer and meditation to improve that conscious contact. I mean, how do you improve conscious contact with anyone? <laughs> through communication, right? Well, the only way that I know of to communicate with God is through prayer and meditation. That is also a lifetime process. You know, I've said that only about two steps, but <laughs> every step is a lifetime process. Step one is the only one that you're expected to do 100%. In fact, it's imperative that you do step one 100%. But I still don't want to forget it. I want to address it on a regular basis. Remind myself that I'm powerless over alcohol and that my life can become unmanageable again if I take over. <laughs> so now we're on to step 12, where we can help somebody else. What a beautiful thing. And the reason is, is because we've had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps. We are now a changed person. Because we're a changed person, we have something to give. We have something that we can give to others to help them also change and become the person that God intended them to be in the first place. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful process to do, and it's a beautiful process to watch someone else do. To watch that transformation take place, it's something you don't want to miss. So one of the other things that the 12 steps will do for you, and has certainly done for me, is it's made me happy, joyous, and free. And I wish that for each and every one of you. I encourage you, if you're dragging your feet through the 12 steps, Dude, make it happen. 
make it happen. Become that changed person and become the person that when you look in the mirror, you like the person that's looking back at you. That's a huge gift. It really is. But don't forget that that's where recovery lies in these 12 steps. Okay? So I'll see you on the next video. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.